Good morning. First of all, I have nothing to disclose regarding this talk. And um, secondly, I'd like to thank Dr. Godoy for setting up my talk and explaining some of the details of MRI. Just uh, out of curiosity, a show of hands, how many people in the audience uh, are doing MRI targeted biopsies, fusion biopsies? Okay. Um, we started the program of uh, MRI targeted fusion biopsies at Baylor about three years ago. And so far, we've done about 275 targeted biopsies. Um, we're still learning. It's, there is a learning curve for that. And uh, the most important thing I learn is that I'm highly dependent on the radiology colleague to basically interpret the MRI correctly and mark it correctly for us to be successful. Anyway, when you're thinking about prostate MRI, uh, the, there are three roles that jump out. Number one is the diagnosis, uh, both detecting prostate cancer and uh, identifying location for targeting. Uh, the second one is staging. In fact, interest in staging with MRI predated the interest in using MRI to target the biopsies. And the last one is, of course, uh, surveillance, I mean active surveillance. So. Uh, Dr. Godoy uh, was more detailed in that, but the technique of the MRI is important. Uh, there, there is debate uh, whether you can do proper work with 1.5 Tesla, but most uh, authorities recommend that if you use a lower magnetic field machine like 1.5 Tesla, you should also include an endorectal coil. The gold standard right now, at least by the radiologist standards, is a three Tesla MRI. Um, and with a three Tesla MRI, uh, the endorectal coil still adds value, but many believe that because of the discomfort to the patient, et cetera, it's not imperative with a three Tesla to use the, MRI, the endorectal coil. And finally, the reporting, when you get a report from your Department of Radiology, it should be based on the PIRADS uh, reporting scale. If you're wondering what PIRADS stand for, it stands for Prostate Imaging Reporting and Data System. This is version two, which is 2015. Version one was 2012. It's basically just a standard, standardization of the reporting so that everybody is speaking the same language. And the bottom line is the uh, PIRATE system, PIRATES 1 is a very low likelihood of prostate cancer, PIRATES 2 is low. The PIRATES 3 is equivocal or intermediate, and PIRATES 4 or, high, or 5 um, always imply high or high risk uh, for prostate cancer. When you decide what to biopsy, um, one and two are really not candidates for biopsy if you rely on the MRI alone. Uh, biopsy is recommended from PIRATES 3, 4, or 5. So when you're thinking of the MRI in active surveillance, the key questions are, can the MRI help identify patients who are not good candidates for surveillance? Can it help you in the selection of an active surveillance cohort? And the second question is, can a prostate MRI substitute for biopsy? Can you use it instead of the biopsies, which is the least agreeable part for patients subjecting themselves to active surveillance? There are multiple studies in the literature looking at the value of MRI uh, in active surveillance. And the bottom line is MRI can identify about 25 to 30 percent of patients who are considered for active surveillance but are unsuitable due to the presence of clinically significant cancers. So the MRI will help you there. The MRI can predict with 80 percent accuracy upgrade on biopsies over a nine-year period 
in a cohort on active surveillance. But the downside is that between 20 and 30 percent of the patients can have progression in grade despite a negative or unchanged MRI. What about the guidelines? Um, it's interesting, but the guidelines from the AUA, NCCN, EAU uh, are quite in agreement in stating the following. Green light for MRI adding value in selecting who to subject to active surveillance and who should be treated. But on the other hand, there is insufficient data at this time to recommend MRI as a standalone test. And the emphasis is on standalone for follow-up in this population. Next topic, the MRI fusion biopsies. What about the guidelines? Those are the most recent guidelines from the NCCN. And I'm quoting here statement one, in men undergoing initial biopsy, targeting using MRI ultrasound fusion may significantly increase detection of clinically significant high risk, namely Gleason 4 plus 3 or higher, while lowering detection of lower risk, Gleason sum 6 or lower, and low volume, uh, Gleason 3 plus 4 disease. Having stated that, however, statement two is overall the panel believes that a data for the use of MRI and MRI targeted biopsies in the initial biopsy setting, initial biopsy patients who've never been biopsied before, are insufficient as yet to recommend them over standard ultrasound guided biopsies at this time. What about the EAU? Very similar. They do recommend the multi-parametric MRI before repeat biopsies following a previous negative biopsy. They also recommend adding the standard systematic biopsies to the MRI targeted biopsies. What about the AUA? Uh, in its most recent statement, the AUA does support uh, fusion biopsies for men with a prior negative biopsy. So that's unanimous across the three agencies. In addressing the issue of biopsy naive men, the AUA suggested that MRI and fusion biopsies, quote unquote, may benefit those with uncertain indications for biopsies. They kind of leave the door open for special circumstances. Anyway, despite the guidelines, um, uh, two recent high quality studies continue to raise the question of using the MRI guided biopsies as an alternative to the standard ultrasound biopsy. And Dr. Godoy mentioned those two studies and described them. I will just add a few points. The two studies, which I, I believe are the most important studies in this uh, field, were the PROMIS study, which was published in Lancet in 2017, and the Precision study. This is the PROMIS study. And the Presti uh, Precision study, which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, in May of this year. Uh, I thought that the PROMIS study was a very interesting, cleverly designed study in the sense that obviously if you're trying to compare the accuracy, sensitivity, et cetera, of your MRI to the um, real presence or absence of prostate cancer, uh, theoretically you'd like to have the whole prostate examined by a pathologist. Now we're not going to do a radical prostatectomy just to prove uh, that the MRI is sensitive. So the next best thing is really kind of a saturation biopsy, which uh, the uh, template, um, template biopsy transperineal, which is done every five millimeter, has been shown to be the most accurate way to identify the true situation in the prostate. And it will identify more than 95% of clinically significant cancers, which are six millimeters or larger. So the PROMIS trial uh, uses this idea and the TPM biopsy is used as a reference. Overall, 576 people participated. They were selected for the study based on suspicion. Most of them were PSA elevation. Some had prostate nodules. All men underwent a multi-parametric prostate MRI. 
on a 1.5 Tesla. And all men received contrast. Subsequent to the uh, um, biopsy, they underwent a truss biopsy and a general or spinal anesthesia. The study was prospective, it was multicenter, it was blinded in a paired cohort. The bottom line is, what, however they define clinically significant, they have three different definitions. Uh, the MR, multiparametric MRI proved to have a higher sensitivity than the equivalent standard truss biopsy. And the bottom line is the uh, MRI sensitivity was 88% in this study, truss was 48%. The negative predictive value, which is important, was 76% for the MRI and 63% for the truss. Furthermore, 27% of the patients in this study uh, would have avoided the biopsy uh, because the MRI did not detect any significant cancer. The weaknesses of this study are that actually no MRI targeted biopsies were performed. And they're assuming the targeted biopsy success would have been 100%. Uh, this is open to questioning. The second thing is pay attention to the fact that the machine strength in all participants was only 1.5 Tesla. So theoretically, there is room for improvement in the quality of the MRI in those patients. The precision study had a different design. It was multicenter, randomized, non-inferiority trial. There were 500 men, all biopsy naive, clinical suspicion of prostate cancer based on PSA or DRE. They were randomized to MRI with or without targeted biopsy depending on the results of the MRI or a standard truss biopsy. Again, this was very promiscuous in terms of use of all kind of machines and all kind of biopsy techniques. The MRI machines were either 1.5 or 3 with or without endorectal coil. And the biopsies were fusion biopsies or cognitive biopsies, that is when you use the MRI information to perform a truss biopsy but focus on the area where the MRI suggests there is a lesion. And they were done either transrectal or transperineal. Anyway, the clinically significant cancers on the MRI, uh, the sensitivity or the detection rate was 38 uh, percent. The truss was 26 percent, obviously a 12 percent advantage to the MRI. In addition, 28 percent of patients in the MRI group had negative MRIs, and those patients actually did not undergo biopsy. The assumption here is that the negative uh, predictive value of the MRI is very high, but it may be so in centers of excellence. Uh, I'm not sure what it is in our center. We haven't looked at it. But in the literature, it varies between 10 and 20 percent um, false negative. So statistically, in this particular study, the non-inferiority margin of 5 percent was satisfied. Uh, you've seen this slide before. Uh, basically, it's validating the PIRAD system. And in PIRAD 5, in their particular study, 83 percent of the patients were diagnosed with clinically significant cancer. Anyway, to summarize. So the guidelines by the NCCN, AUA, and EAU are remarkably homogeneous in defining the role of MRI in prostate cancer. They do support MRI for selection of active surveillance. They discourage MRI for follow-up of active surveillance patients. They support MRI with or without targeted biopsies only in patients with prior negative standard biopsies. And that creates a major issue with insurance companies when you're trying to perform one on a biopsy naive patient. And again, the new high quality clinical trials uh, are basically proposing to regard the MRI targeted biopsies as the new standard in the future. Um, clearly, there is room for improvement technically 
and expertise-wise in the MRI-targeted biopsies. That's all I have.